Hello once again, it's Joe the CRM chap here. We're back with a new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL400. This is the developer's exam for those who are looking uh, to validate their skills on how to build out or extend the Power Platform. So in today's video, we're going to be having a look at business rules. Now, business rules provide us with this capability of being able to do sort of low code um manipulation and sort of client side um, validation of our um, of our data as we're working with it within model driven apps on Microsoft Dataverse and um, they can often negate the need to sort of write um, what we what we generally term JScript or JavaScript form functions um, and they also have the added benefit of also being enforced at the sort of table level so regardless of the type of operations that are hitting the particular system you can also you can throw validation or enforced logic as data is being entered on you know again the clue is in the name with this is all about enforcing the common logic and the common rules that your organization has when it comes to data and making sure those are enforced at all times so to get started with um business rules we need to go into our solutions first of all so we're going to go into the pl your demo solution that we built out so far in the series i'm going to click on account at the top um now business rules are scoped at the table level keep that in mind so we always want to make sure that we're going into the table that we're concerned with first of all uh, to set them up give that a second now just to load up And then we want to navigate onto business rules on the list up here and then click on add business rule and that's going to open up the designer window for us where we can actually get started building out our rule for the first time. Now the experience will look somewhat familiar to business process flows if you've seen the previous video already. Uh, we get a, a very nice sort of drag and drop interface that we can use to define our business rule. Uh, and what we're going to do today is we're just going to build a business rule that sort of, show, that sort of lets us... Um, it always makes sure that people populate uh, a particular field on our account form. So if we go onto onto our account table on here, we want to make sure that we've always uh, populated a um, a phone number for our particular um, um, for our particular account record as, as and when it's sort of created in the system. So we're going to enforce that um, logic out. So we're going to give our business rule a name. Um, so enforce a phone number on uh, account give it a description as well we should always make sure we populate this out enforces uh, supplying a oh no supplying a phone number uh, for a, an account record oh. and we start our first of all with our condition down here so this defines the rules um, that will force our business process uh, our business rules sorry to execute our given logic and we always want to make sure that we've got appropriate action steps covering both the sort of the true and false um, sort of if and else type uh, scenario on there so first of all we just want to select our condition we're going to call this um, we're just going to select our phone number field uh, or oh, I think it's under main phone yep main phone like so I'm just going to say if it um, if it does not contain data and we're going to make sure we give it a name as well main phone does not contain data. We make sure we hit apply because otherwise if we click away we'll lose our data. We'll know it's saved when we can see something down here in our text view. And then we're going to show an error message to the user uh, on the phone number field. Um, so, oh it's under main phone. I keep forgetting that main phone. So please supply a phone number. So again, give it a display name, show uh, main phone error message, apply. Uh, and we're also going to give it a recommendation as well. We'll go back and look at some of these other rules as well um, in, a, in a little while. So we'll just call this main phone recommendation. Please ensure phone number contains plus four four. Okay, and then um, like that 
And with that ready to go, our business rule is actually set up and we can actually start to test it out in the in the system. But let's first of all just explain some of what's actually going on in our particular business rule first of all. So we looked at conditions already, action, so we always need to make sure we've got at least one condition in there. We can also drag on additional ones as you can see down there, but we're not going to worry too much about that today. Then we've also got our action steps. So we've already seen that we can have, uh, we can share our messages for a particular field. Um, we can do things such as maybe just lock or unlock a field on a form, um, you know, set it so that a field is visible. Um, when lock, lock and unlock means read or read only in this context, we can set default values for a field, set something that's business required, or even set a field value based on another value in the system as well. So you've got quite a few different options on here that we can look at. Recommendations are quite good for when you have um, particular um, data points that you want users to sort of um, provide or, or have the system provide for them automatically when certain conditions are met. So if you always know that if certain inputs are received, you need to basically flag a field as yes or uh, or if the opposite, no, then you can use a recommendation to basically automate that step for you. So when a user presses a button, um, it will let them um, sort of just um, apply all of the required uh, field values at a single click of a button so it can save some time potentially from an input standpoint. Other things you've got on here is that similar to business process flows we can download a sort of snapshot of our particular business rule so if I click this image on here we can see we get a nice little screenshot that maybe we can include in documentation or something like that. Uh, we can uh, validate our business rule, uh, business, pro business rule to make sure it's all fine. So in this case, we can see we've actually got uh, a problem with our recommendation down here. In this case, we need to actually make sure that we've supplied a, a field value on this. So this recommendation, in this case, what we're going to do is um, uh, we're not going to make it. A, we're, we're just going to supply any phone number if the user presses the button. Why not? So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, in this context, it might not be particularly useful to do this step. So uh, set um, to fixed phone number. In this case, from a business sense, it doesn't really make much sense to always set the phone number to a specific value because it could always be different for particular users. But in this case, then maybe um, maybe it could be useful. Uh, we need to just modify the recommendation details down there. Uh, supply a phone number. Okay, so that's all work now. So the validation can be quite useful at finding those common errors with your business process flow. Now, the other option here is that you've got the ability to be able to scope your business rules to either specific forms, to all forms in the application, or the final option up here, entity, uh, which will make sure that whatever logic you've defined uh, will be enforced regardless of the type of operation that's um, creating or working with the record in the system. Now, the entity option is useful when you're maybe not doing this sort of client side um, validation. So maybe if you're using sort of action steps such as set field value, set default value, um, that's where the entity uh, option can be quite useful because it will make sure that logic's enforced. Um, so if I was creating the record from a Power Apps, for example, it will make sure that we always um, um, set particular field values on create uh, based on the rules that we've defined in our business rule. For the purposes of today's video, we're just going to select all forms on here because what we're doing here is very sort of client, client side form specific action steps that we want um, to validate for our users. At this point, I'm going to click on save to sort of get that uh, committed into the um, into the Dataverse database, and then I'm going to click on activate. All business rules must be activated first before they will take effect uh, within our model driven apps. Okay, so now we can test this. And as mentioned already, you know, business rules um, at the moment work in the context of uh, model-driven apps um, only. So therefore, we need to go into the model-driven app that we've created earlier. I'm going to hit Control F5 up here to basically just give the application a bit of a refresh. And we should see that straight away our business rule is kicking in because the phone number field hasn't been supplied. Uh, it's shown as our error message down there. And it's also shown as our recommendation as well as a sort of blue light bulb. And if we click that option down there, we get the, the text, the title, and the description for our recommendation. I can then click the apply button and it's going to set my field value straight away, like so. Now in this case, it's still showing my particular error message. If I save the um, application now, although I think potentially, uh, 
how do we get around this? Let me just... Okay. So I've just click on save now. Um, it's basically supplied the... Um, it's basically overridden the error message and we can now save the record. And again, if I was just to clear that out like so, we can see that the uh, error returns for us. So as we're working with the form, as we're changing data on there, um, you know, the business rule will react to that and do what it needs to do to make sure that the data that we want is being populated each time. So business rules are a really great solution that we as developers can turn to. Uh, you know, typically they can negate the need for us to, you know, write out sort of, you know, f form side um, functions using JavaScript or JScript and things like that. It can make our lives a whole of a lot easier. Business rules will also always be supported by Microsoft um, from an upgrade standpoint as well. You know, so really, you know, making sure that we're using them as much as possible will make it easier when it comes to, let's say, you know, deploying new release wave upgrades or moving things between sort of environments. We're not going to have to worry about maintaining any sort of code that we've got uh, because the business rules are just sort of doing it all for us instead, which is uh, what we want. We want as developers, we want to have easy lives ultimately when we're working with the Power Platform, and this helps us in the subject in the objective. So that wraps it up for today's video. I hope you found this useful. Um, good luck in your revision um, and your study for the exam. I hope this has, uh, video and others in the series so far uh, have been useful tools, tools to you. Please uh, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. It'd be great to have you along for the ride. Uh, so all it leads me to say now is have a great day ahead and take care. Cheers.